Western Europe was in recession. But in Florence, bankers and merchants found a new kind of wealth to acquire. Art, inspired by ancient Rome. Their investment created a reborn civilization. The Renaissance. Rich patrons vied to give Florence a style and skyline to match their civic pride. The architect, Brunelleschi, designed a dome for the cathedral that would do just that. Florentines imagined their town as the ideal city, perfectly laid out in accordance with God-given rules of proportion. But what drove the city was money. In politics, cash bought votes. Big spending bought prestige. Bankers charged 45% interest and soon became as powerful as warlords. of Florence wore their wealth on their sleeves. Their cloaks were embellished with silver and pearls, enameled flowers and gold leaf, corals and 800 peacock feathers. Officials policed the streets for those wearing too many buttons and furs. They had little success. The family that outbid all others to buy power was the city's biggest banking dynasty, the Medici. They were the ultimate political party givers. <laughs> Only Florence could entertain the Council of Churches of East and West in 1439. The Medici bankrolled it. Successive heads of the family ruled the town as though they owned it. They used methods recommended by their advisor, Niccolo Machiavelli. È molto più sicuro essere temuto che amato. It is far better to be feared than loved, if you cannot be both. One can make this generalization about men. They are ungrateful, fickle liars and deceivers. They shun danger and are greedy for profit. While you treat them well, they are yours. The Medici treated their artists very well indeed. They collected them as objects of power and influence paid them lavishly and reveled in their genius. The measure of an artist's genius was his ability to find beauty in nature. Everything nature produces is regulated by the law of harmony. And her chief concern is that everything should be perfect. Without harmony, this could hardly be achieved. The critical sympathy of the parts would be lost. Proportion should govern the parts so that they may give the appearance of a body perfect. Florentine artists created ideal forms, an idea of beauty the West has inherited today. Bianco. In such a fashion-conscious society,
artists were expected to dress up old religious themes with a new and personal twist. Members of the Medici family were painted into key roles in sacred scenes, dressed in the height of fashion. And these fabrics didn't come cheap. Florentine merchants spent as much on a single outfit as on a large townhouse. A set of brocade wall hangings could cost more than a country estate. Artists across Europe were paid high prices to make textiles look real. The highest paid artists were those that achieved the illusion of reality. A painting's value depended on the colors it contained. Before the artist touched the canvas, a contract was drawn up stipulating how and where each color was to be used. The most expensive of all was ultramarine, made from lapis lazuli, found only in Afghanistan. Then there was Kermes Red, made from crushed Turkish spiders. Orpiment Orange, from the mountains of Bavaria. Burnt Sienna, yellow ochre. While the world arrived on the artist's palette, the exploration of that world began with man. The human form was the measure from which the wider world could be constructed. To understand nature, Leonardo da Vinci examined the intimate workings of the human body. approach was an engineer's. He designed fortifications and guns. He imagined parachutes. But his dominating obsession was flight. Science is the captain, practice is the soldier. Those who fall in love with practice without science are like a sailor without helm or compass. The screw creates a helix in the air that rises rapidly. From the discovery of man, Renaissance curiosity turned to the discovery of the world, and in Leonardo's case, to the sky. The ideas of the Renaissance spread. People began to think the same way and wear the same look. Today, Renaissance aspirations survive in the desire to create beautiful objects and possess them.